Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, back with some last minute Great League battles for you guys. And in today's video, we're actually taking a look at battles that were submitted by a member of our community whose username is IanVH11. So I would definitely appreciate the submission there. And he runs a double fighter team featuring Scrafty, Shadow Machamp, and Galarian Stunfisk. And honestly, he has some pretty fantastic plays with it. The second battle in this set is one of the greatest comebacks I have seen in Go Battle League history, bar none. So, without further ado, I'll, let's hop right into it. So, the first battle will be up against Hame Stopen. And as you can see, he is in rank 7. So, so, these are pretty decently ranked battles. And he catches a Skarmory lead, which is not good because Skarmory is going to be doing super effective damage. And he gets the weak connection. But he actually makes a good play here. And this is something that I feel like people don't do enough. If you're running a team that is double weak to something, and one of those Pokemon is in the front, if you encounter it, you do want to stay in. So he does stay in here. He's able to land the foul play, which is huge, and he's going to be shielding up the sky attack from Skarmory. Then he's going to be building up quite a bit of energy, and I would imagine he's going to be going for a power-up punch to see if he can bait and get that shield back. Building up quite a bit of energy here, going for the power-up punch, because the Skarmory does want to win the switch advantage here. So the Skarmory is probably going to shield this power-up punch, to be honest. And he does get the shield, which is huge. And let's see if we can counter him down. Oh, he just can't counter him down, unfortunately. This is going to be taking out the Scrafty. But the good news is, is he will be able to come in with Galarian Stunfisk, take out the Skarmory. And what I would imagine is going to be Machamp's biggest threat is out of the way since Skarmory is dead. So nice play there. Stunfisk comes in. And he, the opponent brings in a Deoxys. And this tells me that the opponent doesn't have an Azumarill. Because if you had an Azumarill, you'd typically bring it in against the Stunfisk. So that should be pretty good for his backline. No Flyer, because the Skarmory's out of there, and no Azu. So things are looking pretty good for the, for the uh, Shadow Machamp in back. The Deoxys is going for a Charge Move. That's just a Rock Slide. That's not going to do much at all. He's able to build up quite a bit of energy since he already landed the Earthquake. Something I'm noticing about this battle is playstyle is he likes to go for the hard hitting move first and then bait on the second move which so far has worked out so good on him to go for the rock slide again charging up quite a bit of energy overloading on energy going for the rock slide looks like he's one away from doubling up and this should hopefully be getting the shield does get the shield and then one more mud shot he's able to get to the rock slide this is going to be taking out the deoxys then i imagine he's going to want to immediately switch into his shadow machamp whenever their third Pokemon is revealed. So that takes out the Deoxys here, and it's a Bastodon, and this game is over. Switches in Shadow Machamp, up a shield, and the opponent leaves the mat. So good games. The uh, Double Fighter team, even though it had a terrible lead to start, he stayed calm, he, he stayed in that initial matchup, was able to lose it, but only barely, and then he was able to take the win, so really nice plays there hopping into game number two this is the one i was hyping up this battle is crazy against leo rubin one zero 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 y'all aren't ready for this i'll be honest so leading scrafty into a grand bull this is terrible but since he's double weak to fairy he can't switch out he's just gonna have to try and do some chip damage here look it's just chunking away gets to a power-up punch just throwing it on the off chance they decide to shield. That's basically what he's doing here. Sufficient for a shield. And he gets it, which is huge. Oh my goodness. And now he'll be able to come in with the stun fist to take out the Grand Bull. Building up some energy. And they switch out the Grand Bull. Oh, this is not good. They switch in a Razor Leaf Ludicolo. He's going to counter with his Shadow Machamp. But Razor Leaf absolutely destroys the Shadow Machamp. And without... A charge move, he is going to be taken out. So now we have Galarian Stunfisk up a shield versus all three of the opponent's mons. Goes for the Rock Slide, unfortunately loses CMP to Ludicolo. So he's going to be shielding up the Ice Beam that will be hitting for neutral. And he's going for the Rock Slide. This Rock Slide, he's hoping will get the shield because that should clear the way for Earthquakes in the back. A little bit of lag on his end there. Does get the shield with the huge. It's building up and immediately going for the rock slide. Just because those razor leaves do hit for neutral and do quite a bit of damage. So he doesn't want to take any more razor leaf damage than he already has to. So 
one shield and 33% health, and a Bastodon comes in. He's building up. He's counting the moves. Four, five, six, and he throws on seven, because that's when Bastodon gets to the flamethrower, and he wins CMP, so he overloaded on energy, counted when his opponent was about to throw, and made it so he'd CMP, able to take out the Bastodon, almost no health. Grand Bull comes in. Can he get to the Earthquake? Rock Slide will not be enough. Charge move coming through. He does have the shield. He's going to have to survive these charms. They're resisted, but they do quite a bit of damage. The Crunch is shielded up. Can he get to the Earthquake here? And he does get to the Earthquake with almost no health left. And this Earthquake is going to be enough to take out the Grand Bull and give him the win. Oh my goodness. I thought for sure that was game over. No chance, but somehow he he found a way to win. He he stayed in with a bad lead since he he has a double fighter team. Did the same thing he did in game 1 and was able to rely on Galarian Stunfish to carry. So excellent, excellent battle there. Hopping into game number 3 against Dotsuk1340. Here and leading, of course, with the Scrafty into a Vigoroth. This is an interesting matchup because both Pokemon are doing super effective damage. The Vigoroth should win CMP here. As you see, he goes for the Power Up Punch and the Body Slam is going to come in first. He is going to let that go. Body Slam will do some decent neutral damage. Yep, does a nice chunk there. Goes for the Power Up Punch on Scrafty just to make those counters do even more super effective damage. And the Power Punch is shielded, so gets a shield. Honestly, that works out pretty well. And a little bit of lag there, and unfortunately the opponent does throw. Well, actually, the opponent throwing there works out, because the opponent probably could have countered down. So that ends up working out pretty well. He's going to come in with his Shadow Machamp and just work on farming down. Although the lag, again, Niantic. Fix your servers. Oh, and he's going to be shielding up this body slam because Shadow Machamp is very, very squishy. And then he'll just be able to counter down. Perfect. And he's able to counter down despite the lag, which is great. See what comes out. And it's in Azumarill. And that's one weakness I did notice for this team. Is, is, is I, I do like the team composition. It's very unique. But... All three Pokemon do have losing matchups to Azumarill, so if the opponent does have an Azumarill, that is something where it's going to be a team effort to take it out. I think that that once this trainer does eventually get Rock Slide on the Shadow Machamp, that will help because that'll at least be able to hit for neutral. Going for the Earthquake on the Azumarill really needs to land this, and unfortunately they shield it. That oh, This is not good at all. Building up, he is able to get to the Earthquake. This is only going to do about 50% health though, and they'll be able to reach the Hydro Pump before he can reach another charge move. So this does soften up the Azumarill, which is nice. Building up, just trying to get to Rock Slide, but yep, there's the Hydro Pump. This is going to be taking out the Stunfisk. And the Shadow Machamp, only having frustration, unfortunately does hamper it a little bit. That counter damage with the Shadow Boost is awesome, but it's resisted in this particular situation. It actually gets to a frustration, and I don't think I've ever seen how much damage a frustration does. I imagine not a lot. We'll see. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh no. Okay, and the Azumarill does get to a charge move, and that is going to be taking out the Shadow Machamp. So unfortunately drops game three, and that's why it would be really nice if Niantic had another one of those Team Go Rocket invasions because I got a really good Shadow Machamp after Go Fest, which was the last one, and mine stuck with frustration as well, which is, well, frustrating. So, <laughs> so we're hopping into game number four against Ryoha Ray1973. So leading Scrafty into a Wish Cash, and this is honestly a pretty even matchup here. I'm imagining that this battle is just going to go for some power up punches just to rev up those counters, make them do as much damage as possible. Going for the power up punch, if the opponent's counting, they'll know it's a power up punch and they won't shield. So, power up punch comes through, and the opponent was counting, they don't shield correctly. They do a quick swap into Skarmory. Fortunately, he is a great answer for Skarmory and Galarian Stunfisk because that's going to be resisting all of those flying type attacks. 
and Stunfisk's own rock slides are going to be hitting for neutral. Speaking of which, throws the rock slide here and actually gets a shield. I'm surprised that the opponent shielded in such a bad matchup. Normally I would just let it go and save the shields for later, but hey, we'll take it. <laughs> Sky attack comes soon. As you can see, that does almost nothing since it is resisted by the Stunfisk. Building up some extra energy here and going for another rock slide. Unfortunately, we'll need three rock slides to take it out just because rock slide only does hit for a neutral. First one comes through and that takes it to just above half health. Going for another rock slide and that Skarmory is overloading on energy so they may possibly be building up to a Brave Bird. Rock slide does come through here and that does get it into the red and they should do a quick swap into Wish Cash. So nice play there and they're gonna force this battler to shield but he's gonna be able to quick swap back into his Scrafty and pick up right where he left off. So nice play by the opponent getting the shield back that they had burned in the Skarmory Stunfisk matchup. So well done there. But now they still have the nice matchup and they actually shield a power up punch. So I guess they lost track of how much energy Scrafty had because you want to be shielding those foul plays, not those power up punches. <laughs> Charge move coming through, and it's a blizzard. That's going to hurt quite a bit. Trying to build up some extra energy here. Can he get to the foul play? And he does get to the foul play on very little health. That is fantastic. Opponent's out of shield, so this is going to be taking out the wish cash. So the wish cash goes down. Battle is trying to switch, but unfortunately his switch clock is not up quite yet. Lapras does come in, and he has a really good answer for the Lapras with the Shadow Machamp. That's going to be doing a ton of super effective damage. They swap into Skarmory and throw. He's going to need to use that last shield. Honestly, he can probably stay in here and just counter down the Skarmory since he has so much health. And it looks like that's what he's going to do. Yes, yeah, so he counters down the Skarmory. Now the Lapras will be coming back in. And oh, he's going for the BM frustration. I love it. <laughs> Go for the frustration. Oh, that is fantastic. Frustration does almost nothing. Charge move coming through from the Lapras. Shadow Machamp's really glassy, as I mentioned, so this should be taking out the Machamp. Yep, oh yeah, Ice Beam is super overkill there. Coming back in with the Stunfisk, and then just one Rock Slide will do the trick. So he's able to take game three, which is fantastic. So three and one with the double fire team. Which is fantastic there and we'll see what's in store for him in game number five right, so we're hopping into game number five here against nyk wow you know what i'm just not going to try and pronounce it <laughs> and you scrap the into umbreon honestly this is a really positive lead because those fighting type moves are going to be doing super effective so this is a fantastic lead to get here and honestly you can just go straight power up punch because those foul plays are going to be resisted, so there's not even a point to throw them in this matchup. Going straight for the power-up punch. People are shielding power-up punches today. <laughs> they counter with Skarmory, and again, has a great answer for Skarmory with the Stunfisk. And the awesome thing is he's already down a shield. So he's going to be able to keep switch advantage and shield advantage, which is fantastic, because that sky attack does basically nothing. He'll just need to get to those three rock slides. That's going to be taking out Skarmory. So he does get to rock slide number one. Which does a nice chunk. And then he'll just need to build up to two more. And then he'll be able to take out that Skarmory. So going for the second one right away. Here. And this should take it pretty close to the red. It does get it into the red, and then we'll just need one more and can safely no shield this. There's almost no Skarmory's running flash cannon nowadays, anyway. Skarmory goes for another sky attack, so they're just not even bothering with the Brave Bird attempt, but hey, that works too. <laughs> Gets off another rock slide, and this is going to be taking out the Skarmory. Yep, that does take out the Skarmory, which is fantastic. And they bring in a Jolteon. That is a bold choice. <laughs> bring in a Jolteon into a ground type. Okay, all right. <laughs> Definitely should have brought the Umbreon in there. That was a bit of a mistake by the opponent. 
building up to the earthquake and oh he decided to bathe wow <laughs> oh my goodness so he's baiting there and he gets the shield which is fantastic and now he should be able to shield up this charging from jolteon and then get to the earthquake which is definitely going to be enough to take out this jolteon Discharge coming through. Jolteon does appear fairly spammy, so an interesting great league choice. Not what I've used. Gets to the Earthquake, and this is going to be taking out the Jolteon. So all that's left is just going to be Umbreon, and at that point, the Scrafty is just going to be able to handle that from here. Yep, Umbreon comes back in, hops back into, oh, tried to hop back into Scrafty. I couldn't quite avoid the charge move, but honestly, that's even better. They threw the energy onto Stunfisk. That's perfect. I can go with Scrafty and they'll have a lot less energy and they'll just be able to power up punch their way to victory from here. Just ramping up those counters because the only move Umbreon's going to be able to go for here really is Last Resort and that's not going to do enough. Yep, and just, oh my goodness. Getting locked into a bad matchup against Scrafty is so demoralizing because with each power up punch, they just get stronger and stronger. Oh, they go for the foul play. They just... They just give it up at this point. <laughs> and he's just going to be able to counter down and take the win. So really nice plays there. And I definitely appreciate the submissions. If you want your battle submitted, go down to the link in the description. I have a Google form that you can fill out and share the battles with me. And I'd be more than happy to feature them. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I do really appreciate it. If you guys are new, you enjoyed the videos, and you're excited for Ultra League, definitely hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Alright, peace.